Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. Um, it's a real pleasure to, to be at this conference speaking. And actually, it, it's quite a challenge. I, I'll do a spoiler here. This is about community. And since uh, we already have some great talks about this, the keynote by Aditya, and today's talk, uh, the second keynote by Cassandra, it, they, they made my life really harder. But I, I promise for you that there are some uh, interesting things for uh, uh, me to share with you. And especially because this is a more like a practical view uh, of how I engage the community in what I what are the learnings I got from, from doing that? Well, uh, like this, uh, uh, they said, I'm Daniela, I'm a consultant from ThoughtWorks, and I, came, uh, I work in, uh, in Brazil, so mostly of my community work uh, is based down there. And I also happen to be a Google developer expert in Google Cloud Platform. And okay, let's go. Uh, let's talk so about the best feature of Go. So we, re we really, really have some really nice features that uh, since you, we are here already in the second day of the conference, you have heard a lot about channels, go routines, interfaces, uh, tests, uh, reflection whatsoever. So why community? And, uh, uh, most especially, why considering community as a feature of the language? Uh, that is because actually if you Turn that question backwards. What's uh, of the language without its community? Uh, that, that's the main question here. Because if nobody is using it, nobody is uh, changing it, nobody is developing it, actually, it makes no sense to have the technology. So, kind of, it's not only, in my perspective, the best feature of the language, but it's also the most important feature of the language. And. Talking about features, uh, I've seen this very interesting talk about Stevie Francias, I highly recommend. Uh, that's called Go Building on the Shoulders of Giants and Stepping on a Few Toes. Uh, and he the, manages to, to, to trace a history of the Go language uh, back to the these roots and how it was inspired by several other languages. And here's a list of them. And, uh, for me, it was really an uh, interesting talk because uh, there were many things I didn't know about Go. For instance, I really thought that channels are, were uh, like a novel idea, but there are channels in other languages as well. Which kind of uh, proves the concept that Go kind of like to take about to pro proven uh, features to insert in the language. It kind of doesn't try to invent anything, but does compile the, the, the best features of every language. And there is one language over there that has a community that's pre pretty similar to the one we have uh, at the Go uh, language. And can you guess what language is that? Uh, a, hit, uh, a hint is not Java, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's Python. If you guess Python, Python is a, a language that uh, I was engaged with the community, Python community before getting to the Go community, and I feel that we share a lot of our values. And here's uh, the slogan of the biggest Python conference back in Brazil, that's called Python Brazil, that basically says people are greater than technology. I think it's a very powerful thing for you to make this kind of statement, because kind of keep you on track of what's really important uh, instead of we're not, not making technology because of the technology. We are making technology because of the people. And if you, we somehow um, uh, see this backwards, we are, kind of, we are doing it wrong. Basically, we are doing it wrong. Uh, uh, technology is a way to make the, the, the lives of the people better. And this uh, is something I, I think is, we should uh, learn as golfers uh, to put the, the, the person, the, the people in the community uh, on the, the front, on the, the, the first thing, the priority of the language, kind of like what Cassandra said uh, earlier this morning. Uh, there is a quote from the Naomi Sider. She is a chair at the Python Software Foundation. And 
she says, none of what we do in terms of writing software, open, uh, open source software, would be possible without community. Without the community, the technical work cannot exist. Uh, she was saying this in the context that we see a lot of criticism about why are you, are you talking so much about community? Why is that? We, we should be doing, should be seeing a lot of code and technical talks and whatsoever. But the, the point here is that community work is technical work. And I saw this uh, very clearly in my career because nowadays as a consultant, I'm, I have assumed the, the position of a technical leader. And I spend about 30 to 5% of my time uh, coding. The other 50 to 70% of my time, uh, I spend negotiating with people. And this is like the biggest challenge on my work is to convince uh, the business to use some kind of feature or take some kind of path, uh, make some architectural decisions. And this is purely technical but it, it needs that kind of soft skills that we develop as a community. So it's really important, even for your careers, to get involved with community because you will be developing this kind of skill. Another quote uh, I really like uh, from the Python community is uh, this one from Brad Cannon. I came for the language, but I stayed for the community. And I like to, to rephrase that, that phrase, to, to paraphrase it in my own quote. I came for the community and I'm staying because of the community. I, I will explain that, that uh, in more detail uh, uh, very soon. But okay, the language is really cool, but that, that, what, that's, uh, the community is what's keeping me here. And just telling about a bit about my, my background, I started my career as a C++ uh, engineer, working mostly with firmware and client-server applications. That was like 14 years ago, so uh, a lot of, of things changed. Then uh, I made uh, several transitions. Here are the most important ones. I used to be a DBA, then I started working at Oracle as a sales consultant. Uh, the most remarkable thing about this uh, career is that I was living uh, a very different scenario from what I have here. Uh, Oracle technology is completely proprietary, so I didn't have so much contact with community. The, 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 I think the thing that was most uh, more closely resembled a community was the Oracle forums, and that, that's not a community. Uh, it was really restricted in that sense. We weren't able to propose changes, we weren't able to, to modify code and whatsoever. Uh, but everything's uh, changed. Uh, I left Oracle in 2016, and I joined Global.com soon afterwards, in the beginning of 2017. Global.com, for those of you who don't know this company, is the internet branch of a, a major media conglomerate in Brazil that uh, it's called Ready Global, and Probably you heard a lot about Brazilian soap, opera, uh, soap operas and telenovelas. They were kind of the biggest producer of that kind of content in the world. So basically, I worked at that, that company, and they had a very strong culture about open source development and sponsoring communities. So that's how I got in touch with this kind of work. And my first community talk was soon after I joined Global.com. Uh, Global was very famous uh, for sponsoring uh, diversity events, mostly targeted to in the inclusion of women and other minorities. This is a Hills Girls event uh, that happened uh, back there. And I was really moved by that, uh, that kind of context where I, we are we're, we're teaching uh, women to, that never had contact with the internet or web uh, development uh, to empower them. And I was really uh, impressed by that, that kind of work. I didn't know that this uh, actually existed. And I kind of changed my life in a way that I made what I call um, a personal mission of it. And 
I don't know how much you, how many of you know me uh, from the internet, but I'm openly tra transgender, and I had a lot of difficulties when in my development uh, because I didn't have enough references to follow. And when I saw that, I saw the opportunity to, to make that a personal uh, mission of mine, to be the reference that I didn't have when I was growing up and discovering myself. You don't need to actually have this kind of mes uh, mis uh, personal mission, but it's really powerful when your personal mission is related to your career goals. So you, I really uh, highly encourage you to, to find your personal mission. So uh, I was one day at, at Global, and they invited me to, to sponsor another event that was the Women Who Go. This is uh, a print of my, the first email uh, I've sent you. Back then, it was Sarah Adams that was in control of the Women Who Go. Uh, for the, who doesn't know what Women Who Go is, it's uh, the diverse initiative to in include women in the Go community. And that was basically my first contact with Go. So that, that, that's why I said I came for the community. I really wanted to get engaged, but I didn't know anything about the language. But OK, let's do it. So in the end, that thing evolved. And uh, I was selected for the GopherCon uh, scholarship last year, and together with about 40 women. Uh, and that was really a life-changing moment for me because, uh, you know, I was new to this community. I didn't know anybody. And basically, I, I, I went there with the approach of, let's talk, just talk to people. And one of the things that mostly impressed me is the fact that I was talking to people. I didn't know who they were. But afterwards, I, kind of, I discovered that I was talking to very, some very influential people. And I was really impressed in how open they were to hearing my ideas, that I was basically nobody. I was just starting there. And this uh, was a real life-changing moment for me. So it was my first time in the USA. And afterwards, I left GopherCon with the, this question. They did so many things for me. What can I do to give back to this community? So thinking about this, uh, and this uh, kind of relates to Aditya's talk uh, yesterday, what kind of contributions can you actually make? Uh, he made the classification of four types. Uh, here I put some more. Maybe I'm repeating uh, some of those. But basically, uh, did, uh, I did almost everything here in this list. So I, now I, let's go to the practical side of things and shows some stuff I'm, I've done with it, uh, what are my, my learnings about that. OK, first starting with open source. Uh, last year, I was uh, at GopherCon Denver, and we did the first edition of the Contributor Workshop. I don't know how many of you uh, had the opportunity to yesterday uh, attend the, the uh, Contributor Workshop, but it's really straightforward. It's like a step-by-step -step approach on how you make contributions to Go. This was my first one. It's not uh, a contribution that I'm particularly proud of by its technical content. Actually, uh, uh, I just changed like four characters, literally. I inserted in space in the host name uh, uh, word. Uh, but I'm really proud of this contribution as an example of how is small you can uh, start so I really encourage you, every one of you, to make contributions to the Go language. You don't need to, to be a genius and propose a new form of compiler to, to contribute to, to, to the language. Actually, you can start really small. And I was kind of, when I, prepared, I was preparing this talk, I was kind of ashamed. Oh my god, this was like a year ago. I didn't do anything afterwards for contributing to Go, the Go language. So I did. Another one this week. <laughs> and this time it was not four spaces, it was four lines. <laughs> so uh, maybe in, in 10 years or so, I get some real code running. But the idea, again, is just to prove how easily this thing can be done. Actually, this uh, contribution was a side effect of a, an article I was writing. I'll show the, it later. And 
again, uh, it's really easy to contribute. You, uh, I encourage you because this, uh, I really got to know better how the process of contributing to open source works and it was really uh, inspiring to do so. One other contribution I, uh, that I did soon afterwards at uh, GopherCon was organizing the talks repository. And it's, it, although it's a very simple thing, I basically called it in Markdown, but I got uh, this response from Brian uh, Keltersen, uh, like saying in public, th thanking me in public uh, for the things that I've done. And this is, this kind of encouragement, uh, I, I never seen anywhere. And this, this is one of the things that I really like about this community. In a related sense, uh, with my work as a GDE, I do a lot of uh, talks uh, about Google Cloud, especially machine learning. And there's this Golang samples repository I use a lot. And every time I do a, a new talk, I f usually find something I, I, I think it uh, would be cool to improve. And I basically started doing it, and then uh, um, my pull requests were starting being accepted, and uh, soon I became a collaborator of this project. And again, another public feedback. Uh, Chris saying, oh, it, it's re really useful to support readme's, but it's not very sexy, and a comment from Cassandra that I really like. It, actually, it is for them sexy because you are making the lives of people that come after you. Uh, the li their lives are getting really better because you are making the things easier for the next person to come. Uh, but then, of course, the, my, my entire life is not uh, about only contributing to readme's and writing te uh, documentation. I did some uh, real contribution uh, with code. This is uh, the Gota package is a, a data frame for Go, uh, kind of inspiring the Pandas data frame for Python or the R data frame. And it was missing a describe function. Uh, and describe is like a, a very easy to implement and when I saw that, I saw it was a great opportunity for, uh, to give something back. Uh, like I said, uh, I really like uh, just tracing a parallel here. I re really like the Python community, but I find it very hard for, for instance, in Python community to make a contribution because it kind of seems like everything uh, was already done. And the, the thing that I love about Go, that many things are just starting, so it's a really a great opportunity for you to engage and do something uh, different. Maybe there is something in your domain that you know that's available somewhere else and you can port it to Go. Uh, maybe there's a package you know that has some kind of feature you uh, would be desirable. That's a good point to start. So, basically, regards contribution uh, with code. Uh, the message you bring here it's not uh, limited to the experts. You must find your comfort zone. Maybe, maybe you really want to work with the Go language project, but maybe not. Maybe you just want to support some kind of packages. Uh, I don't know, there, there, uh, there is a space for everyone. And if you have no idea where to, where to start, there is this repository from Avelino that's awesome Go. It's a compilation of some, uh, the best packages. Uh, it, it's um, a repository supported by the community. So there are a lot of uh, packages you can pick one and start from there. About organizing events. Uh, another uh, poss uh, possible way for you to contribute to. Uh, this is the event I did uh, back then when I was just starting. This, the, well, I have this, done this game in the terminal. It was a tutorial for teaching uh, girls how to coding, uh, code in Go. Unfortunately, uh, I'm still, uh, uh, I have promised to, tr to translate this uh, tutorial to English like for a long time, and I'm really sorry I still haven't, but the URL is there. But there are some other things I think it needs to be changed in this tutorial because it, its code is not very idiomatic ago, uh, because it was built uh, back then when uh, uh, we were just learning the language, so there are a lot of mistakes there. I, I hope maybe next year I'll 
present something uh, that's already working in, with idiomatic Go, but the, we really thought that was an interesting way to teach Go, uh, kind of escaping from the traditional ways of teaching, like, let's build a game. It was in the terminal with emojis, so it was really cool. <coughs> And this is another thing I helped, uh, thing I helped to organize, uh, the GoferCon Brazil Diversity Scholarship last year. So had, we had this huge problem that very few women attended the, the first edition, and we imagine, managed to improve a little bit the numbers. So we uh, got from 4% to 8%, kind of doubled the attendance, and five of those girls um, were sponsored by the scholarship. And that was one way of giving back because I left Denver with that mission of they did so many things for me. What can I do to give back? So I tried to help doing this scholarship. Uh, but then uh, there are some learnings about organizing things. First, you don't need to know go to organize a meetup. That's a, a good thing, actually. Uh, there are some challenges, for, for instance, uh, finding sponsor, venues, finding the speakers. They are mostly uh, in demand for social skills. You need social skills to solve that kind of challenge, so it's a good opportunity for you to develop that kind of skills. Like I said, it's very important, especially in, your, in later stages of your career. Uh, you can organize other things besides meetups, for instance, the scholarship. Uh, if you don't want to start a thing, maybe you can collaborate with uh, something that already exists. Maybe be a volunteer for GoFerCon UK next year. And you can, and actually you should start small because organizing is very hard. Um, I'm really thankful for all the work that the organization has done here because I know how hard it can be. Uh, and it also, it's not only hard, but uh, very time consuming. And this is one of the things that I decided to not do anymore because uh, it's very hard to, to scale, uh, in, in my point of view. I'm not very good in organizing things. Uh, I barely can organize my personal life. So I this is something I decided I uh, wouldn't do anymore. But I really uh, admire people that can do it. It's a really great skill. Um, in regards to public speaking, that's uh, something I actually I really love to do. And since last year, I did uh, about 10 talks, since that very first one, and almost one per month. And this year, I already, this is my uh, 11th one, and I already have maybe two or three until the, next of year, uh, to the end of the year. So it, and this is, is something I really love to do. So instead of organizing, I decided to focus uh, on just speaking. And here are some advice for, for you who want to start doing uh, talks. First, uh, of course, start small uh, to build confidence. And this thing about having meetups, local meetups, is a very good way for you to, to start practicing with a small audience. And I have written an article, actually, because I used to be a very, very introverted person. and. I detail all these steps. I don't want to, to take too much time in this, uh, this topic, but uh, if you look at that article, it, I have a lot of tips for you how to de develop this kind of skill. And it's a nice balance, uh, I think, about the time you, you take to prepare a talk and the impact you can have with uh, the, the talk. Because once you prepare one, uh, the talk, you can repeat it as ma many times as uh, you want. Basically, you just submit for every conference and meetups and whatsoever, and uh, it's a very good way to engage with the community. If you are lacking ideas for talks, uh, it's uh, very often uh, useful to, to bring a personal perspective about something that the community is already discussing, uh, especially because people are different from each other and we learn in different ways. Maybe uh, the content that's available out there, it's not enough for someone. And your perspective can be the difference between someone learning or not learning. So it's, uh, it's really imp uh, important to do this kind of job. About writing articles, uh, this is uh, one article I've written uh, this week. 
Uh, the article itself, uh, it's really nice. I've uh, been testing the uh, Pixel book for development, and I decided to write about it. But it's not the article that's important, but it's actu actually how I chose to do it. I actually wrote the, uh, this article at the same time I was doing uh, the task, because from my experience, uh, I was, before uh, I used to do some things, and then uh, a little later I think, oh, this, this, this uh, thing I've just done, maybe it will be a great idea for an article, I'll do it later. And then I never do. So the best way to, to approach writing is like when you're facing the problem. So I was basically trying to do this thing and writing the article in parallel. And I kind of developed the second part of this article. I also published it this week since I was, um, I was uh, here waiting for the conference to start. And this is uh, an interesting article, even if you don't have the, the Pixel book, because it, it has the step-by-step -step on how to contribute to Go. This was the article that generated that second contribution. So if you are curious, you didn't have the opportunity to attend the contributor workshop, Here's a, this article have a step-by-step uh, process on how to make contributions as well. Uh, articles, or, or maybe even videos, and if you are fond of it, you want to record a video for YouTube, maybe having a channel, uh, they scale, scale a lot better than talks, uh, especially articles if you are more like introverted person, it's a good uh, form of contributing. And if you first did a talk, you can also the, the make an, a written version of this talk. It's a, a talk transcriptions can be a very good uh, way to, can be very useful topics. Uh, one of my learnings was that usually articles should be small, and the optimal uh, uh, size is from six to ten uh, to eight minutes, ten minutes tops. Uh, after that, people usually l lose interest and they kind of just skip to the end and don't read. So uh, try to keep them small. If you get an article that's too big, just break it into a series. It will be better absorbed by your community. And what I th think that's a very uh, nice thing about writing is that when you write about things that you're trying to understand, you need to explain it to, to other people. It's actually a better way for you to, to improve your learning process. So it also is the same for talks, uh, actually. So I, I usually find it very uh, helpful. If I want to learn something, I decide to write about it. Uh, so it's a good way to start writing. Another approach for contributing the community is mentoring and te teaching. Um, mentoring is not very scalable, it's a one-to-one -one approach, but it can have a huge impact in the life of someone. So I try to, to balance this. I have like two or three people I mentor constantly. You don't need to actually meet the, the people, uh, the person in person, and but you can use Twitter or maybe WhatsApp. Uh, sometimes even a single message that will take like 30 seconds to write can uh, change the, the life of someone. So I've been that, uh, doing that for a while and it's really rewarding when you see the evolution of the, the person you are mentoring. Uh, also on the teachers, uh, teaching side of things, uh, last year I did at GopherCon a beginner's workshop uh, workshops are also found to be very time consuming. Uh, this one uh, went really well, but just because I had the help of a volunteer that was Ellen, she was really great. And the, she, actually, she did almost the whole thing, and I was just there on the day to help their, her present the workshop. So I assumed the responsibility, but uh, I wasn't going to deliver. And this is uh, actually some really nice. Uh, thing about the community is that asking for help is, is a good thing. Because if you can't do something by yourself, the having a, a community to back you up, it's a great thing. So thanks to Ellen, actually we managed to do this workshop successfully. And later I turned it into a talk. And basically wrapping up, 
my life after Go, I did like several things. And so before Go, I was just focusing on a single technology. And then nowadays, I got engaged with the community. I became a GDE. I became a Launchpad mentor. I was leader organizer of several groups uh, back in my, my country. I'm a member of the GoFercom Brazil Board of Advisors and a lot of other things, writer, speaker. And the result of this is basically that. Uh, my life became a chaos, completely chaos. So uh, if you see my, my, my repository while I, I keep my talks, there's a hole in there that in April I did absolutely nothing because I was so consumed that I got actually sick. So the, the, this is a, the, just an, uh, a reminder that you, we are just humans after all, so you don't need to accept every offer people throw at you. But uh, I kind of try to filter them out, keeping the, the focus on what I said, that personal mission, that's really important. So I, nowadays I have this approach of, it, Filtering things, if they contribute to that mission, okay, I'll do it. If no, uh, if they don't contribute, I'll just keep them. And you need to choose the things you are more comfortable with. Uh, in, the, in my case, I dropped almost every organization task I did uh, take before because uh, I just found out that I'm not very good at it and I was spending so much time. and. By speaking, that's something uh, that I really like to do. I get m much more engagement. I feel that I have uh, been more successful doing that, this kind of role. And I hope you have seen that there are actually many ways to contribute to the community. Uh, you, and you can every, kind of, uh, every way you can start really, really, really small. So you don't need to be an expert in anything to do, uh, actually make a difference in this community. And so that's basically it. Uh, thanks uh, a lot for coming. Uh, if you want to ask any questions, I'll be here. Please. Hi, uh, my name is Nick. I've been developing uh, Go on my Chromebook for the first time this week as well. So I was just wondering if you had to put yours in developer mode to do that. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get your... Uh, Did you have to put your Pixel book into developer mode to develop Go on it? Oh, uh, no, I didn't. Actually, you just have to enable what they call the developer channel. It's not developer mode. Uh, so you have a, a setting that you change the channel from stable to to dev channel, and uh, that enables some kind of terminal that, it's a, like a, a Linux container, actually, that runs uh, virtualized, and you can like install things over there, so you don't need developer mode, actually. Great, I'll check out the article, thanks very much. Okay. Please. Yes. Um, I just wanted to know if you had any particular advice on how you balance contribution with your full-time work, so for mentoring and contributing. Yeah. Actually, I do this, like, it's a side thing that I, I do from my main work. But actually, uh, ThoughtWorks uh, is very supportive of community. That's why they, they gave me the, this time to be here. For, uh, I, I should have been working, <laughs> but I'm here. But because my company really, really believes that we don't just uh, need to have an impact in the business, but we need to have an impact in the community as well. So that, that's actually perfectly aligned with the, uh, the mission of the company. So they kind of give me this kind of opportunity, like for traveling. But most of the community, the, the community work I've done before, uh, it was part of the, um, was on my spare time, my personal time. Thank you. Thank you.